welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're returning. I hope you guys are having a great day. Today is Friday and I plan on posting this tomorrow. So I have a lot of work to do still <laughs> before this video goes up. Please let me get done. Um, I do farmhouse style DIYs on this channel. I do trash to treasures and Dollar Tree DIYs. And then in the summer, in the spring and summer, I will share my garden with you for those of you there that are interested. And today is also a very special video because it's a collab with my two friends, Sarah from Pajama Crafts and Kat from According to Kat. Here is a quick look at Sarah's channel. She does farmhouse DIYs as well as shabby chic. And she also shares her cute little family and her sweet little daughter Brie. She's adorable and I love her videos so much. And then here's a quick look at Kat's channel. She also does farmhouse DIYs as well as other styles. And she shares hilarious bloopers at the end of every video. She will definitely make you laugh. And both girls are so sweet. I hope you'll go over and check them out. Give them a big thumbs up after you watch my video. And give me a big thumbs up. I love you guys. I appreciate your support always. You guys are so special to me. This whole channel is so special to me. Every single one of you. So thank you so much for your continued support. It really means a lot. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for our first DIY, we're going to be making a farmhouse terrarium and you'll need four of the six by eight canvases from Dollar Tree and two of the eight by 10 canvases. And I didn't end up using the skewers, so I didn't end up needing those. Now, these staples are a pain to get out. I struggled so hard to get these out. Um, I think it depends on which, you know, each canvas will probably be different because I noticed that some came out really easy. So at first, as you see here, I'm using my Dollar Tree wire cutters. And if you kind of grab the, um, material the cloth canvas and pull it as you're trying to pry out the staple that was the easiest way but that ended up not working for all of them because some of them were really embedded down in there so I ended up taking a sharp like a steak knife and kind of sticking the tip of it into the staple obviously I don't suggest using a knife um, because that's dangerous, but that's what I did. I know that Me uh, Jessica over at Measure and Mix just uploaded a video making one of these a couple weeks ago, and she um, linked a tool in her description box. So go check out her video if you're interested. And also, I really, really struggled hot gluing this together. So I did use E6000 and hot glue, and then I found the best method is to put it together and then use some of this tape, this painter's tape that you can get at Dollar Tree and use it to kind of tape around to hold it together. Well, then you can put your roof on and not worry about it falling apart because hot glue alone for me, I don't know if it was because I painted mine, but it would not stay together. It just kept falling apart. It was really, really frustrating. but. This works out really great with the tape and then once it dries and the E6000 dries, it's super sturdy. So um, as you can see here, I just hot glued all of the smaller frames together and then the two larger ones on top and it turns out so cute. And then I just took a little wreath that I had purchased at Hobby Lobby a while back and stuck it down in there and then a little plant and then a Ray Dunn candle that I got at TJ Maxx and I think it turned out really cute. Now I had the idea to make this when Sarah and I collabed recently. Last time I told her on Instagram that I was thinking about making one of these and that was before Jessica's video came out. Not that it matters but I'm just saying I was planning on making this before she made hers and I love it. I think it's beautiful. I'm going 
going to be using one of these Valentine's trucks from Dollar Tree. I have so much Valentine's stuff that I bought at Dollar Tree that I never used. And then I'm going to be using these three paints. We are going to make Buffalo Chuck. I love Buffalo Chuck. And it's really pretty easy to make. It's just a little scary. It's a little intimidating. But once you do it a couple times, you'll find that it's really not difficult. It's just a little bit time consuming. So the first step after I sand it off the glitter is to paint the truck white. And then I used a blow dryer, which I highly recommend um, so that it cuts down the time and the tedious process of doing the buffalo check. And here I'm showing you that mine kind of bubbled up, but it was fine because it only bubbled up on the part that I was going to be covering up with flowers. Um, but just be wary of that. That can happen when you paint it. Um, and the first step here for the buffalo check is we lay down one piece of tape directly in the middle and then lay down two more next to it. And you wanna make sure that they are very even next to each other and then remove the middle one. And then we continue that process all the way across the whole surface. And then once we have all of our tape down, we are going to put the second layer of paint, which will be gray. And then we will let that dry. Or in my case, I used my blow dryer. And you do want to make sure that your tape is um, down really good so that you don't get bleed through because even with my tape down really good, I still got bleed through. Um, but you can go back and touch it up. And that's what I did. And so here is the second layer, the gray. And then once that is dry, we, went, we will go ahead and remove our tape and flip it around. And then we're going to repeat that same process in the opposite direction and then put another layer of gray. The apple barrel elephant gray is what I'm using. And then once that dries, we will leave our tape on this time. We're not going to remove it. around we're going to leave our tape on and we're going to place the tape in the opposite direction back where it originally was on these lighter lines you can see when you get close you can see where it goes we want it we don't want to cover up the dark spots we want to cover up the light spots and then we will put our final layer on which will be black and then once the black dries we will do the final exciting reveal my favorite part removing all of the tape to see our beautiful buffalo check. Um, and like I said, I still had a little bit of bleed through and I did touch it up, which is really easy to do. And then I just hand drew a little window on, filled it in with some white paint. Um, and then I took a little mini thing of paint and just laid it down to make a circle for the middle of the wheels. And I think it's so cute. Um, I just used a Sharpie and then filled it in with some black paint. Once I was done painting the wheels, I decided to add some flowers in the back of the truck. These are flowers from Walmart and they were 97 cents each and I just love the colors, but you can use Dollar Tree flowers. I thought was going to use Dollar Tree flowers, but I just really love these colors, the soft pink and white together against the Buffalo check. I thought it was really, really pretty. So I hot glued them down and then I trimmed off the edge of the flowers on the bottom part so that, you know, it would show, it would look like they were in the bed of the truck. And I think this is so pretty with the pink and white against the buffalo check. And then I just took a craft stick. You can get these at Dollar Tree and I hot cut off the top to make a line and then hot glued it on the back of the truck to make a little stand. And then I went over to my Cricut and I kind of measured the size of the truck so I could see. I always use my Cricut mat to measure so I know how large to make my decals. And I used the font, it's called Hello, H-E-L-L-O from dafont.com. And I created the word Hello Spring. And then I used my Arteza vinyl, which I love. And I just chose the color white. 
I will have this vinyl linked below. If you do not have a Cricut, you can use graphite paper, you can use carbon paper, you can do the transfer technique where you scribble um, pencil on the back of a piece of paper. But the graphite paper is what I would recommend, you know, if you just want to um, buy something to use that's cheap and that works really well. I use it. The reason I didn't use it in this video is because my printer, my regular printer is out of ink, but I used it in my last video. So if you guys are interested in how to use the graphite paper, definitely check out my last video. And then I think I used it in the video before that as well. The stuff is awesome and all you do is lay your image down on top that you've printed out lay the graphite paper underneath and just trace over it and then you can use paint or sharpie or chalk markers or whatever you want to use to go over your image so if you're interested in entering the giveaway just leave me a comment make sure that you are subscribed also go over and subscribe to Arteza's YouTube channel and leave a comment on their last video. And when you comment on mine, let me know what country you're in. I will have a list of eligible countries in my description box. I've never done a giveaway like this, so I hope that you guys are interested. This graphite paper is really nice. I mean, there's other options. So if you're interested, it's just a fun little thing that they have offered to do which i think is awesome and besides what country you're in let me know what brings you joy what makes you happy what is your hobby is it your animals is it youtube is it crafting let me know and then for our last diy i just created a simple little dollar tree wreath that i think is so pretty i used some of this ribbon that i got at dollar tree and one of their little um, wreaths and then these flowers, which I am not really a big, huge fan of yellow. It just depends on what it is on. Um, like the crate that I painted in my last video, I love that with the yellow color, but normally I don't decorate with a lot of yellow, but I chose these yellow flowers from Dollar Tree and I think they're so pretty. And this was so simple to make. You literally just stick the, you know, cut the flowers down stick it in there I didn't use hot glue or anything and I think it turned out so pretty and that is our last DIY I'm very happy with how everything turned out I hope that you guys will go check out Sarah from pajama crafts and Kat from according to Kat and enter the giveaway if you're interested if not that's okay I just wanted to do something nice for you guys and I was really excited I thought it was nice of them to offer to do this so I hope that you guys all have a great weekend. I have another video coming out tomorrow. I'm excited to share with you. A little nervous because I'm sharing my craft room and you know, behind the scenes is not always as nice as what we show on video. So I hope that you will check that out tomorrow. I love you guys and thank you so much for all of your continued support. I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.